Hey, uh, my name is Ronnie Atayere and today we are going to look at how we can harness technology or leverage technology for global peace and basically we shall be using the positive peace framework and uh, uh, this framework is basically from the Institute of Economics and Peace and uh, we shall see how we can actually uh, leverage technology to enhance the strength of each pillar to achieve uh, global peace but before we continue uh, allow me to introduce you what positive peace is which is basically the attitudes or institutions um, the structures that create and sustain peaceful uh, societies so unlike negative peace which is basically um, the absence of violence a positive peace fosters how we can actually leverage uh, how we can continue thriving uh, uh, when there's peace but also uh, amidst also a uh, conflict so that's what basically um, uh, positive peace uh, refers uh, strengthening and leveraging those societies and institutions and uh, there's eight pillars that actually are uh, under the positive peace framework which that we shall look at uh, including not limited to well-functioning government sound business and uh, the rest as we shall look on so these eight pillars that we that are under the policy peace framework we're going to see how we can leverage uh, the role of technology uh, to making sure that we can have um, a potentially uh, peaceful environment and and then also see how we can uh, promote and transparency inclusivity uh, innovation and then uh, see how we can uh, actually achieve uh, all these things uh, using technology like e-governance uh, blockchain and digital education so uh, let's get started with our first pillar so our first pillar is well functioning government imagine a government that has digital platforms uh, for transparent and accountable governance for example Estonia's e-residence program this provides a digital trust for residents to collaborate to collaborate uh, with um, and do a digital identity and then trust each other digitally and then also be able to be inclusive in the governance structure uh, of the entire uh, records of whatever is happening in the country then we see also civic engagement platforms like uh, change.org uh, e-participation platforms whereby they allow uh, different individuals to come through and uh, participate in maybe for example in uh, government uh, voting and all those other things to make sure there is change or how they can voice out uh, their opinions for inclusivity and that's how we can actually leverage um, technology using e-governance for us to achieve a well-functioning uh, government. The second pillar I want to talk about is sound business and uh, this is how we can leverage uh, technology. For example, uh, Silicon Valley, that is well known, how it creates a good and economic environment uh, in the US, California, and Nairobi's Silicon Savannah here in Kenya. Uh, basically, how they are using technology for economic empowerment. Uh, it could I see examples like Alibaba, uh, how they can help um, global reach for a local person or someone who signs up locally on a platform but can also internationally get uh, a customer. Then the other third pillar we're looking at is equitable uh, distribution of resources. Here we could leverage a blockchain for resource allocation because at least it is immutable, uh, transparent and secure transactions whereby you could have uh, the entire food distribution process uh, being observed from the distribution point until the last uh, meal delivery. Uh, this could help out in food distribution, aid delivery, supply chain management uh, to see how the entire process goes. So platforms uh, like Khan Academy, Telehealth, uh, we also see uh, you uh, the WFP using uh, the blockchain for do for food distribution in the refugee camps, uh, which is something that uh, amazing to see, and that's how could you leverage uh, blockchain in order to achieve equitable distribution. And then uh, also we have the fourth pillar, what's basically acceptance of rights. We've seen how platforms like Amnesty International leverage social media online campaigns uh, to reach out uh, globally to people uh, in combating uh, digital or human rights and uh, that enables inclusion and diversity 
and uh, movements like over online or digital uh, spaces uh, in order to uh, voice out the voices of people uh, who are actually fighting for human rights and uh, that's something uh, to reckon with so the fifth pillar is good relations with neighbors so we can have across border collaborations uh, through uh, international partnerships like the united nations global compact and the uh, online collaboration tools that help us really talk uh, via across neighbors so technology comes in to go beyond uh, borders and it helps us to interact with neighbors in a way that has never been before so it's beyond the physical boundaries and creates us a virtual diplomacy and conflict mediation. For example, the Peace Tech Lab helps us with uh, data uh, management and transparency, whereby plat uh, countries can have a virtual diplomacy over um, engagement and civic uh, uh, relationships so that people can actually, or governments can come to terms or agreements. So it helps us with the uh, conflict resolutions and these tools help us move virtual negotiation platforms whereby you can't physically reach out to someone but technology helps us to bridge the gap. Uh, pillar six that is basically free flow of information so uh, international social media um, platforms like uh, open access journals uh, information sharing and all those things help us really to democratize uh, information uh, access whereby anyone everywhere can actually reach out and find out what is happening and uh, using social media this information can spread so fast but also we can combat misinformation with tools like uh, fact checking fact checking websites like the international fact checking network that is if ifn i think and then uh, ai driven misinformation detection so at the same time we share information but also at the same time be able to combat uh, misinformation uh, high levels of uh, human capital uh, so basically platforms like uh, Coursera or Dusty help us really to learn and continue lifelong uh, learning and in that um, capital uh, through education resources and health resources uh, basically uh, can be seen uh, through people who can continuously keep learning and then skills keep developing in regards to the areas whereby you can constantly improve ourselves like create digital health innovations, uh, telemedicine and these other health, health apps that have come along like Teledoc and other health monitoring uh, applications. Uh, the last but not least which is low levels of corruption, we, um, this is really a, a main thing here in Africa, especially where I come from and uh, we've seen how blockchain can actually help us with whistleblowing uh, like transparency international uh, tools. Uh, we in Kenya here we have a tool called Ushahidi, and Ushahidi basically helps us with um, uh, public uh, reporting of uh, corruption scandals or cases uh, over time to help us keep track of who and where and what time and who has done uh, corruption, and then also to help us really keep in check of the corruption that is actually happening around the, the country and then um, a transparency really does it more on a global scale uh, uh, and the Ushahid that just does it here in Kenya. So uh, there's a case study that I came up with that's basically uh, examples of how people are leveraging uh, tech for good. Uh, here in Nairobi, sorry, here in Rwanda, um, President Kagame's uh, regime has deployed uh, drones uh, for medical deliveries, basically seeing drones uh, move around to deliver uh, medicine and uh, all these other things really it is something that uh, to reckon with how technology is actually changing the environment over there but i also talked about estonia's digital society and then the coming up of the icbdc uh, that is basically um, the digital identities of banks and all those other things and uh, factors really that contribute success um, supportive policy and community engagement whereby people get to accept what is actually happening uh, with uh, what the government is trying to implement and this is really a good thing that is actually being done uh, here on our neighbors in Rwanda. So our future directions uh, is to include more of AI, IoT and also other peace building potential then encouraging uh, tech, inno tech innovation through hackathons, uh, workshops, using maybe coming um, the upcoming uh, tech um, 
uh, tech categories like uh, Internet of Things, cyber security, teaching, um, future, uh, the digital marketing uh, space, that AI and data science and analytics so leveraging all these uh, we could actually uh, have a positive piece because a positive piece is as a lot of contributions come from different t sectors and uh, we know that cyber security and among all the things really uh, give us a play or a hand in establishing how well and how functioning uh, peace is in an in institution or government or country so um, and uh, let me just uh, give us uh, potential barriers that could help uh, that that could um, uh, come or along uh, this uh, this uh, movement that is basically digital divide uh, in Africa here uh, people uh, there are few people uh, who actually can access internet and all those other things but uh, luckily enough uh, uh, projects like a project loan by Google uh, Starlink and all those other things are coming up with cheap and acceptable accessible uh, internet to remote areas or hardly uh, to reach areas here in Africa whereby uh, for example project balloon a project loan by um, uh, by Google uses balloons to basically reach out to all those places that actually had to reach uh, cyber security risks uh, this could be um, uh, strategically mitigated by workshops by training people their dangers and how they can actually uh, be uh, reactive to cyber security and also um, culture ad adoption here um, there's a main soft shift and uh, expensive technology uh, maybe increasing uh, government policies and also getting uh, funder, funder donations and all those other things in a way that uh, people get to have uh, more uh, learn more about how they can actually uh, see how they can uh, mitigate all these risks uh, allow tech expansion in their places so the key points that we've learned from this is a recap of all this that we've done is that positive peace those are attitudes uh, institutions and structures that create and sustain peaceful societies we've seen the eight pillars uh, that exist uh, including well-functioning government uh, uh, low levels of uh, corruption creatable resources on distribution uh, and all those other things and how we can actually leverage a number of tech-driven initiatives uh, towards uh, a positive peace like uh, the example of Estonia and uh, Rwanda, uh, Ushahidi in Kenya, Transparency, International Monitoring Tools, how Amnesty International is doing the work, Red Cross is implementing, uh, is leveraging how the youth can actually use technology in uh, solving for peace and all those other things. So I um, remain running at Hairi and um, prospective IEP ambassador. And uh, if you've liked this, please share the video to everyone who um, who is a champion of peace but also I uh, share it with everyone who would love to contribute to peace and peaceful societies uh, specifically to positive peace and uh, yeah and if you like this video uh, please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel where I share and the what I've learned but also a technology to the world because I'm a a tech enthusiast and I also create and leverage technology for society for society good social good and I believe in tech for good and that's why I participate in such uh, events and endeavors thank you so much and uh, stay blessed thank you